In a go-around, should you raise the wheels first or retract the flaps? This time in the ABS hangar, go around, flaps first or landing gear? In a go-around or balked landing, should you retract the flaps first or the landing gear? When you retract the flaps, should you stop in the approach or half flaps position? Or should you simply put the flaps all of the way up? These are common questions that come up in training and are frequently in online discussions. What's the definitive answer? To find out, I conducted an experiment in the ABS Air Safety Foundation's A36. Come fly with me. All right, we're going to demonstrate the drag created by various devices to see which would be the first that should be retracted in a go around. Now, the way we're going to do that is to slow the airplane down to about 120 knots. So in a clean configuration, that's going to take us somewhere, it's going to require somewhere in the 16 and a half inches of manifold pressure range. I don't be, I want to be below two miles northeast of our airport. flap extension speed, maximum flap extension speed. So I'm going to come back to 16 inches of manifold pressure. So departure uh, Piper 9568 Charlie. And the airplane should stabilize at about 120 knots. Line at uh, 9,500. Jersey 6 Charlie, we're shot apart to radar contact. Stay altitude. Uh, 6 Charlie, level 2,500, heading 05. Right. Jersey 6 Charlie, Roger. 120 knots. My navigation first. All right, now, to begin the demonstration, I'm going to extend the landing gear. Gear's coming down. One, two, three, green, no red. And we'll see how much deceleration is created from the drag of the landing gear. German Airport. We started at 120, so we've lost 10 knots. Approach, Archer 2229 Yankee, checking in 7000. Number 2229 Yankee, what's the approach with altimeter 3016? 20 knots of airspeed loss from the drag of the landing gear. Switched out departure, caravan November 1, Quebec, off the Stearman Field, direct Rockney. 25 knots, the rate of deceleration is decreasing. In other words, the airplane is reaching a stable indicated airspeed. And VFR 1 Quebec. November 0 Victor. Or a nice smooth air with altitude hold, so that's helping us quite a bit. And it looks like the landing gear drag gives us about. A no factor on the traffic, is it 32 knots of airspeed loss. So I'm going to advance the power to accelerate back up to 120 knots and retract the landing gear. Gear's coming up. Gear up, now we're in transit. So I'm going to start at the same indicated airspeed so the same conditions for the test apply. Uh, All right, 120 knots. Now, I'm going to repeat the test by extending full flaps. The gear is up, full flaps coming down. And we'll see what the drag effect of the full flaps is relative to the gear. Now, of course, we'll have some pitch change. The autopilot's bringing it back up. Contact tower today. For the visual. To level flight. One zero zero six seven. Okay. Morning, Wichita approach November sixty six. Flying out. Started at one twenty. Yeah, echo. And if we could. there's one hundred twenty knots of airspeed loss. Go hold whatever you need us to do.
November 6, 60 mile, for Wichita approach, Wichita Thunder 30166. Back vectors, how long do you need to burn fuel? Probably about 10, 15 minutes, uh, 6 lane alpha. 90 knots. Alpha is in heading. It's in heading, 6 lane alpha. November 1, Quebec, contact Kansas City Center, 120.2, good day. 40.2, thanks for your help, one Quebec. Eighty-five. So we've lost thirty-five knots of indicated airspeed. It's still decelerating. One three zero vectors for the climb. All right, one three zero for the climb. Altitude my discretion. One two one Golf Bravo. November one Golf Bravo. What altitude you plan on working at? Uh, for the cruising altitude three thousand five hundred. One two one Golf Bravo. November one Golf Bravo. Roger. Maintain BFR three thousand five hundred and resume navigation. Eighty-two. The rate of deceleration is decreasing. Navigation. 80 knots. And we stabilize at about 79 knots. Drag from the landing gear resulted in a 30 knot loss of airspeed, while drag from full flaps cost 40 knots. Flap drag is 33% greater than the gear drag. The experiment suggests retracting flaps before retracting the landing gear to remove the most drag and to begin acceleration and climb more quickly. But this raises another question. After applying power and establishing the attitude needed for go-around climb, should I retract the flaps partway to approach or half flaps first, then retract the landing gear, and finally retract the flaps the rest of the way? Or should I move the switch to bring flaps all of the way up without pausing at the approach or half flaps position? First, let's look at another video. And let's check how long it takes for the flaps to retract from the full down to the up position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very gradual flap retraction, smooth, and no dumping or sudden loss of lift during the flap retraction process. But you have to pull the flap switch out in order to get over a stop to go down, both to the approach condition and to the full flap position in this airplane. But in order to retract the flaps, you don't have to pull it out. You can slap up the flap handle. And this was done by design to reduce the workload of flap retraction. In a 2019 ABS Magazine article, I wrote about calibrating an angle of attack indicator. As part of the calibration process, I found that at the airplane's current weight, power off stall speed with the flaps up was 59 knots. With the flaps in the approach position, which in a 1981 A36 is 15 degrees, power off stall came at 50 knots, a 9 knot reduction. Go to full flaps and power off stall speed dropped by only 2 more knots. This tells us that the first half of flap extension adds both lift and drag, but the second half of flap extension is almost entirely drag. That's another reason to retract flaps before retracting the landing gear in a go-around, to reduce the greatest amount of drag quickly so the airplane will accelerate and climb. The available guidance from Beach confirms all this. Most VTAIL Bonanzas, all travel airs, and the G33 Bonanza do not have a balked landing checklist in the pilot's operating handbook or Beach owner's manual. There is no factory recommendation on whether to retract flaps first or landing gear in a go-around. Late V-35Bs, F-33As and Cs, all Model 36 variants and all Barons had a balked landing checklist in their original POH or owner's manual. These all call for retracting flaps before retracting the landing gear in a go-around. The anomalies are debonairs and some 1950s and 1960s bonanzas. These models did not have a balked landing checklist originally, 
but had one added to the manual in the late 1970s or early 1980s. These all call for gear retraction before flap retraction. But the flap design is no different from models that have the reverse order specified in their original handbooks. And every new Beach POH that has been issued since these updates has recommended retracting the flaps before raising the landing gear. In all manuals with a balked landing checklist, the procedure calls for retracting the flaps to full up without pausing in a partial or approach flaps position. Several Bonanza and Baron POHs make it clear the flap should be commanded to zero degrees at the beginning of a go-around. There we have it, the definitive answer. From beach recommendations, backed by experiment, in a go-around the correct sequence is command flaps fully up first, then retract the landing gear. There's much more to learn about your Beechcraft in the ABS Learning Center, free to ABS members. Log in or become a member at bonanza.org. Don't miss another edition of The ABS Hangar. Subscribe to the American Bonanza Society YouTube channel. We'll see you next time in The ABS Hangar.